World AIDS Day, and today we're tracking how Nkosi's Haven, that's a center catering for women and children, has been faring, particularly in a world ravaged by COVID-19. Our reporter, Linda Misi, joins us now live from the center. Linda, you've been in conversation with some of the people heading up Nkosi's Haven. What are they telling you about dealing with their own challenges in a world that's battling COVID-19? Well, Michelle, you know, the unfortunate thing here is that, you know, life goes on and they have to soldier on, uh, especially for the benefit of the women and children who live in this particular center. It's, it's a haven, really, a safe haven for those who, um, you know, couldn't live in our society, for those who don't have homes, and for those who have been, um, you know, uh, left without parents. Uh, essentially. So it's, it's, it's really uh, that safe haven for those children. I just want to show you the couple of pictures that are on this uh, particular wall, Michelle. These are all the good memories that, uh, you know, the people who live here have, have had uh, over the past couple of years. And uh, I remember speaking to Gail Johnson last year, and she indicated how the COVID-19 pandemic was a threat to everything that they had worked uh, of four and how donors were shrinking. We'll be speaking to her a little later. But to get a personal account uh, from someone, a young person who lives in this uh, center, I'm joined now by Happy Motapo. Uh, Happy, thank you so much for your time. Great chatting to you once again. Just for the benefit of the viewer at home, I just want you to take us back in terms of how you got here. Um, my mom passed on in 2010. Later on, I found out that I was HIV positive, also malnourished, and my family could not look after me. So 2012, they brought me here, and since then, Gail has been my legal guardian, who's made sure that I'm fully nourished, make, taking care of myself, and drinking my medication. How has life been living here? And how did you navigate the space that your family couldn't take care of you and your mother had passed? Um, it was a tragic event, and most times people don't get over passing on of a loved one. But um, Gail has offered services like counseling to make sure that we recover from any tr tragic things that helped, um, that happened in the past. But yeah, Gail has made sure that, you know, she's been good to us. And looking at how my life would have been out there if my family had decided to take care of me while also being in this situation that they're in, I would be, I'd practically be part of the set of teenage pregnancy and along all with the other problems, you know. And, um, I mean, we, we, you've also, you know, been part of this project for a very long time. Talk to us about how... Uh, living here in the times of COVID-19 has been for you? Um, it, it was difficult. We, 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 um, when the sponsors or donors lessened, things became a little too difficult and we had to try and readjust to the new environment, readjust to, you know, um, not having as much as we did before, even though, it, like, then it wasn't much, and now it was like less than before. So it was, it became very, very difficult. And school also became a, a very, very bad place to go to. And you would be, you know, masked up, and you cannot be friendly as you used to before. And that made the environment quite hostile, if that's the correct word for it. But you know, it, it, it we were try, we are still trying to adapt to this new COVID, the new environment that we're living in. Yeah. yeah. I know it's not something that, you know, is usually shown on the television or hearing voices of young people, particularly those who are minors, speak about COVID-19. Yeah. But when you speak to your peers and the young ones here in the center about the plight of HIV and now exacerbated by COVID-19, what are the kind of conversations that are coming up between yourselves and the young ones? Um, in the beginning, it was fear, so much fear, because... Um, I remember they told us that if you were, you had like some chronic disease and you got mixed up with COVID, it could be like a, like termination time. You know what I mean? Um, it, at first it was fear, but then with the new vaccines coming through, it's like, okay, there's hope at the end of the tunnel. You know, there's 
still beautiful things to look forward to. Even if you have COVID, the symptoms won't be as severe as they would. They say they would be, you know. And other things is that now with with my peers, we we talk about, you know, it's 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 like we have to plan ahead. I can't just rock up or pop up and just do whatever we want. Concerts have to be limited, you know, things like that where we would just go freely. It's now oh, God, we have to think of how many people are going to be there. What if somebody's infected then? You know, and even if you're having fun, you know there's times where you're having fun and the mask goes down and you're just like, oh, my God, I have to put it back <laughs> up, you know? So, um, yeah, COVID has affected us as peers in a bad manner. And now we are also worried about our future. We, yeah. we also don't want a future where um, I'm going to be giving birth with a mask on or having children and having fun, you know, with our families with a mask on and meeting yeah. people with a mask on all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And just lastly, we've, we've run out of time. I just want to gauge your, your sense. I, from what I'm hearing from you, there's also a greater acceptance from yourselves as young people mm -hmm. living here, some living with HIV, um, uh, acceptance of the vaccines. Yeah, um, from the news and the stats that were given to us, um, it sounds like we might get back to a new norm that's better than before. Yeah. And we are, we are looking forward to that because we just want something stable, something to look forward to without worrying about our lives being in danger. All right. Happy Motapo is a resident here at Ngosi's Haven. Gives beautiful interviews, Michelle. Mm. I love having conversations uh, with her, indicating that, of course, there's a greater acceptance of, uh, you know, the vaccines. There was fear amongst her peers in this, uh, you know, in, in this particular center. Uh, but living here has definitely, definitely changed their lives. Michelle? Ah, incredible interview there, Linda Misi. Thanks so much for bringing us that important uh, perspective from a young person living with HIV. Linda Misi, thanks very much indeed. He's live to us there from Nkosi's Haven.